In our previous video, we set up some test data that filled in our quest log. But by the end of this video, when we talk to our NPCs, he'll ask, can we help? And we'll be able to say, yes, of course, because we're very kind. He'll say, thanks. And now if we check our quest log, a quest has been populated, given to us by that old man. Then when we talk again to our NPC, he'll say, good luck finding those potions. We're going to have conditional dialogue. He knows we're on the quest. Let's check it out. So let's get straight in there and start off by writing a script to manage holding our quest. So I'm going to click on our game controller object. And as this holds our inventory controller and our save controller, it's a bit datary. So I'm going to use this as our holder for our new script, which I'll call our quest controller. I'll double click on this to open it up. And in here, we're not going to need update or start, but we will want to make this a public static quest controller instance, which inside our brackets, we can set to get private set. To set up this instance, we'll use an awake and go if instance equals null, then instance equals this, else destroy this game object so that we only have one quest controller in our game. By making this a static instance, we'll be able to use this script from any of our other scripts. So cool, next at the top, we want a public list of our quest progress, the class we set up in our previous video, which holds our active quest progress. So I'll name this active quests and we'll set this to equal new. Cool, and last of all, for now, we're going to want a private quest UI for our quest UI. So we'll be able to talk to the UI script, which we also set up in our previous video. So if you haven't done those, I'll link them below. So cool to grab this quest UI inside our awake. We'll go quest UI equals find object of type, then passing quest UI. So we can grab that script and use it in our next function where we'll go public void accept quest. Here our NPC will pass in the quest that he's holding and that he's giving to us. So when we get a quest, we'll go active quests dot add and pass in a new quest progress, then brackets pass in the quest. So this will construct a new active quest for us based on this template of a quest. We use quest progress instead of just quest so that we can up our current amounts without editing that existing quest in case you want to reuse it later. Maybe you have a repeatable quest or something. But anyway, now that that quest is added to our list, we'll go quest UI dot update quest UI. Now, if in your game, you only want one quest at a time of a certain type, which is what I think is in most games. So I'm going to add to my game a public bool of is quest active, pass in a string quest ID then type equals greater than active quests dot exists, pass in Q for quest equals greater than Q dot quest ID double equals quest ID that we've passed in. So here we're checking, does this quest ID already exist in our active quests? And we'll pass back true or false. So before we accept this quest and add it to our list, I'm going to check if is quest active and pass in the quest dot quest ID. And if it is already active, I'm just going to return out of this. So we never accept a new quest that already exists. Also for accepting quests, this is all we're going to need for now. Let's go back to Unity. And next up, we're going to want to work on our NPCs and then giving us quests. So I'm going to go to our NPC folder and into our old man and go to our old man dialogue script. On this scriptable object, we have our dialogue lines, some options which attach to these dialogue lines and some choices. If you haven't done our NPC script, you might want to catch up with that one too, as we're going to continue on from this and add our quest options. With these choices, you can see here, he says, hello there, young man. Can you help? This is dialogue index one which if you look to our choices, links to this element dialogue index one here, meaning if we say, can you help? It'll display either yes or no. And we'll then be pointed to our next lines. If you say yes, he'll say, thanks, I knew you'd help. And if you say number four, no, he'll say, oh, okay, maybe next time. On yes, we want him to accept a quest. So we'll add a new section to these choices and add a couple more variables down the bottom for our quest lines. So inside my scripts folder, I'm going to go to NPC dialogue and open this up. And like I said, we're going to want something that tells us which of our options from our choices makes it so we accept a quest. Let's go public bool array with the square brackets. And I'll name this gives quest, which shows if our choice gives a quest. Then up in our NPC dialogue, I'm going to add some more variables. So first I'm going to add a public int, which I'll call quest in progress index. So if we're currently accepted the quest, what will our old man say when we talk to him again? Like good luck finding those potions. And then a public int for our quest completed index. So when we've completed the quest and we go to talk to him again, what's he going to say? And finally, of course, we'll want a public quest of quest 
added a few comments just in case none of that's clear. But let's go to Unity and populate these so we can see how they're used. So back in my NPC folder for my old man dialogue, you can now see on our choices, we've got a new array. If I add some, you can see these are tick boxes. I'm going to add two to line up with our choices. So if we say yes, it gives a quest. So I'll tick element number one. If I said no to can you help, I'm not gonna give us a quest. So I'm gonna leave that unticked. Now for our quest in progress index, what do I want him to say while we're still on the quest and we haven't finished? I'll add a new line to our dialogue lines at the top. And let's say he says, good luck finding those potions. We don't want that to continue after that. So in our end dialogue lines, we're gonna to want to add one more for element six and have that ticked. So after he says, good luck finding those potions, it'll end and it won't continue down our list. So that's element number six. In our quest in progress index, I'll type number six. For our quest completed index, I'll add a new element again. And we'll say, thank you for the potions. Let's add another line. He'll say two things, cause he's real happy. Maybe I'll open a shop. Ooh, foreshadowing. Cool, so that's two more elements there. Let's add that onto our end dialogue lines. Element number seven, we don't want to end on, but element number eight, I'll leave ticked. So he'll say, thank you for the potions. Maybe I'll open a shop. Very cool. On our auto progress lines, I'll just add the same amount so it's consistent. And maybe I'll make our thank you for the potions auto progress. All customizable, however you like. So cool, let's close those up. Now we've got thank you for the potions is what we want him to say when it's completed. So let's put number seven in our quest completed index. And finally, we wanna pass in our quest. So in my assets, I've got our collect potions quest, scriptable object, all set up. I can just simply drag that in to our quest slot. Very cool, that's an NPC set up with choices, dialogue lines, and the conditional dialogue lines set up, ready to be added into the script. Now that that's all ready, we can go to our NPC script and implement this. So inside scripts, I'll go to my NPC script, double click on this, and in here at the top, we're actually gonna add two new things. The first being a private enum called quest state. Since we wanna know what part of the quest we're at, as this is gonna affect how our NPC acts. So is the quest not started? Is the quest in progress or is the quest completed? Of course you can have NPCs that won't give quests. You just won't have any choices that tick the give quest button. So you can just ignore all the quest bits on an NPC scriptable object if you don't want them to give a quest. Anyway, we're gonna want to store this quest state in a variable called quest state. And we'll just set this to a default of quest state dot not started. So cool, let's go down our script. All of this top bit is fine, but inside start dialog, we're going to want to sync in with our quest data. So let's say maybe we've started a quest or completed one. We're gonna need to know about that from our quest controller. So we're gonna write a function to do that. And once we have that quest data synced, we can set our dialog line based on that quest state. So underneath this start dialog, just so we can see it easily, I'm going to add a private void sync quest state and in here we'll check if our dialogue data dot quest is null. If it is, and we don't really care about quests, we'll return straight out. Otherwise we can go string quest ID, set this to equal our dialogue data dot quest dot quest ID, as we're going to use this to check if our quest controller dot instance dot is quest active and pass in our quest ID. Then we'll set our quest state to equals quest state in progress else We'll set our quest state to equals quest state not started. Now, as this comment says that I just added in a future update, we're going to add completing our quests and handing in, which we'll also need to add to this sync quest state. But for now, we'll stick to these two as that'll be a lot to do all in one video. But cool, now we've got this sync quest state. We can stick this up in our start dialog under where we've written that little comment right at the top. And like I said, now we can set our dialog lines based on these quest states. So if our quest state is equal to quest state dot not started. We'll set our dialog index to equal zero, which you can see is also down below under is dialog active, which we're not gonna want. So let's delete that as we only want it done if our quest state isn't started. Else if our quest state equals quest state in progress, our dialog index will equal dialog data dot quest in progress index. And of course here we'll also go else if quest state equals quest date completed, our dialog index will equal our dialog data dot quest completed index. But we won't see this bit yet. Like I said, it will be in a future video. At least it's set up here. So cool, let's see what happens next within our dialog system. So we set everything up at the beginning and then we call display current line. If you hold down control and click on this function, 
you can see where this goes to. So display current line, start a coroutine of type line. Let's go to type line. And in here we type our line out. That's all cool and fine. Then we call next line. Let's go into next line. And in next line, we do our typing. We check if we want to end the dialog and then we display our choices. Okay, we're getting there. Inside display choices. This is where we're gonna want to accept some quests. I did that the long way. So you could see how you step through code and find where to go. So inside display choices, we create our choice button. So our choice button is telling us what the next index we want to go to is. We're also gonna want to tell it about a ball of gives quest. So does our choice dot give quest and then square brackets pass in our i to grab the correct array. That'll line up with that tick of if our choice gives a quest or not. With this gives quest, we're going to want to pass this into the choose option function, which you can see is down below. Let's pass it in while we remember. So choose option needs now to accept a ball for gives quest. In choose option in the parameters, we'll go comma ball gives quest. And we'll simply say if gives quest quest controller dot instance accept quest and we'll pass in dialog data dot quest the quest that our npc is holding then we can set our quest state to equals quest state dot in progress so cool that's all we need for our npc let's go back to unity and the last piece we want to do is for our ui right now inside our game controller we have a quest ui controller script in here we're passing in some test data so we're manually passing in tests and forcing those into our quest log now we've got some real data to play with. So let's go inside our quest UI script by double clicking on this. And you can see we have this test quest. You can leave this here if you like. So you can keep switching between test quests and our active quests. But to get this to access our active quests instead, it's very simple. Instead of test quests here, where we're building the quest entries, we want to go quest controller dot instance and call our active quests. And guess what? That's all you need. If you want to switch back to the test quests, of course, you'd always just be able to copy and paste this in here. But if you don't want to use test quests anymore, you could delete this code. Very exciting to delete code. Oh, look, it's shorter. Wow. So cool. Now if we go to Unity, we can try pressing play and we can take a look in our menu inside our quest tab. We've got no quests at the moment. Let's go to our old man. Okay, please work. Hello there. Can you help? Yes. Thanks. And you, oh. I pressed it too fast. I knew you'd help is what he said. <gasps> if I take a look, you can see we've got five potions that we need to collect and two heart potions that we need to collect. That's so exciting. Now, if we talk to the old man, he should say, good luck finding those potions. Amazing. It's gone to our in progress instead of our normal text. That means we now have an official quest giver and our quest log is now using active quests. Of course, if I go to grab some potions and check our inventory, we've got two in there, but this hasn't updated in our quest log. Well, in the next video, we're going to get picking up items, updating our quest progress. And also when we drop our items, it'll also make it so our quest progress will go down and when we pick it back up, it'll go back up again. But we'll split that into the next video. Of course, if you haven't been following along with the series and that's a lot of scripts that you need to catch up on, don't worry because you can join our Patreon. On our Patreon, you can grab every single script I've ever written not just this series but the whole channel or to make it even easier where you don't have to put any of this together you can get the whole template with all finished features and future updates which are included for free which i'll also link below if not i'll see you in the next one bye